I'm Dr. Benito Rattan. I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. So today's video is all about lactic acid. Is lactic acid safe for skin of color? And the reason I want to do this video is because acids generally are quite confusing in skincare. And for skin of color, we have an additional level of complexity because for us, our melanocytes are large and they are easier to trigger. I always say one scratch, one bite or one burn and we hyperpigment. This means that we cannot afford to irritate our skin too much uh, because it can lead to hyperpigmentation. And actually our number one skincare concern tends to be hyperpigmentation. So often a lot of the treatments that were designed to treat pigmentation may work very well for Caucasian skin, but actually in the skin of color, can worsen our pigmentation. And unfortunately, the vast majority of skincare on the skincare shelves right now were designed for Caucasian skin, um, with very little thought to skin of color and the percentages that we can tolerate. So that's really why I created this channel, so that you are educated and empowered when it comes to your skincare and how to spend your hard-earned money, so that you're not wasting money on product that has not been designed for you, that can make your skin worse, and you are purchasing things that are better for your skin. As you know, none of my videos have ever been sponsored and they will never be sponsored. This is a video library for our skin of color family globally. Okay, so let's start talking about acids. The reason acids can be very confusing is because some exfoliate, some are antioxidants, and some are humectants, water magnets. So even though they all they may all have the word acid behind them, they all have different properties and you need to use them at different percentages and you need to combine them with different ingredients. So, you know, for a newbie into skincare, this is very overwhelming. But honestly, even if you're advanced in skincare, you may still not know the best way to use lactic acid and when to avoid lactic acid. So uh, today's video, I'm going to break it all down for you. It's going to be super simple. I'm going to tell you the correct percentages, how to combine them, mistakes made, and then of course my favorite products for lactic acid. If that sounds good to you, give me a thumbs up. Let's dive right in. So lactic acid is part of the AHA family, the alpha hydroxy acid family. Now the other ones that we hear about a lot would be mandelic acid um, and glycolic acid. So mandelic acid is the largest molecule. It has the largest molecular weight, which means that it is excellent for skin of color because it's very safe. It travels very slowly through the skin and so very rarely leads to burns or irritation. So that's my favorite AHA. Lactic acid is my second favorite AHA because there are many benefits with it. It is hydrating, it helps with wrinkles and it helps with hyperpigmentation, um, but it is a slightly smaller molecule than mandelic, so it's gonna be a little bit more irritating on the irritancy profile, um, but I still love it for skin of color. Glycolic acid, I think of glycolic acid as my least favorite AHA, even though it's the most popular on the shelves and that just reflects why so many products on the shelves are not ideal for skin of color is because it has the smallest molecular weight and can fly through the skin rapidly and can lead to hot spots. So sometimes you can get burns, which can lead to pigmentation or it can damage the skin barrier. And I'm not saying this is all the time at all. Some people use glycolic acid and are absolutely fine, you know, for years. It's just my least favorite. So if you can choose and they all cost the same and you have equal availability, I'm always gonna opt for mandelic or lactic over glycolic. So how does lactic acid work? Lactic acid is a chemical exfoliator. It literally dissolves the bonds between the skin cells on the epidermis so that when you wash your face with water, all the dead skins wash away with it. You don't get any peeling as such with it, uh, especially with over-the-counter lactic acid exfoliators, but your skin will look brighter. And the reason why I prefer chemical exfoliators over physical scrubs is because physical scrubs, you are not just removing dead skin cells, you are also removing alive cells, living skin cells, which can lead to sensitivity and micro tears. So these are not things that I would want for my skin of color family. So I always opt for chemical exfoliation. Now, as I've already discussed, there are many benefits when it comes to lactic acid. It helps with melasma or hyperpigmentation. It helps with wrinkles or fine lines. It removes dead, dull skin, so your skin glows more. 
Um, it rem and also removing those dead skin cells means you have better penetration of actives, plus it's hydrating, and it also helps to minimize pores. So there's so many benefits when it comes to lactic acid uh, or chemical exfoliation in general. However, you can have too much of a good thing. So there is a maximum cap I would put on lactic acid for skin of color, and I would recommend approximately 7%. Um, because you don't want to over exfoliate because then you start to damage the skin barrier. It leads to dry, flaky, sensitive skin where you put other actives on it and it inflames the skin. 7% tends to be my cutoff and I tend to say once a week, maximum twice a week. For my skin, which is sensitive, I tend to just exfoliate once a fortnight. So do listen to your skin. I would also say that your skin can become more sensitive to UV if you exfoliate. And so you have to already, I know you're all very good with your SPF 50, but please, you have to become religious with your SPF 50. I always prefer uh, mineral sunscreen because it is anti-inflammatory. And of course I do love uh, Dr. V and Zinca books because it's invisible for skin of color. But there are other ones that I like too, including sheer zinc uh, from Neutrogena, Tinted, uh, Live Tinted has got Hugo, which is an SPF 30 there are, and pipette I think also has an SPF 50 which is mineral too I've actually done a whole video on my favorite mineral sunscreens for skin of color but yes I do you have to be vigilant with your SPF 50 avoid chemical exfoliation if you have sensitive damaged skin barrier if you have eczema if you have psoriasis or if you have rosacea you should not be exfoliating because you need a healthy skin barrier with enough dead skin cells at the top to allow exfoliation to happen. Otherwise, you you end up in a vicious cycle where your skin is not able to function properly and you actually lose even more water and your skin becomes damaged even more rapidly. Now, after you've exfoliated with your lactic acid, I would recommend that you use non-irritating ingredients, ideally antioxidants or tyrosinase inhibitors because those tend to be the ingredients that we require for skin of color, especially as we age. So avoid retinol, for example, which is an alcohol, which you wouldn't put on freshly stripped skin. Um, opt for a retinaldehyde or retinol palmitate. Um, don't use ascorbic acid, for example, which is a low pH. Opt for tetrahexaldecal ascorbate, which is a derivative of vitamin C and it's fat soluble, goes into the dermis and stimulates collagen. So just be a bit careful and mindful of the ingredients that you put on after you have exfoliated lactic acid. I would recommend a nafe safe fatty moisturizer afterwards and then in the morning don't forget your mineral SPF 50. Okay, so I'm going to go through my favorite lactic acid products that are on the market right now for skin of color and this is my criteria that I look for in the ideal lactic acid exfoliator. So I've already said it should be less than 7%. I do like you to use humectants with it. Um, so something that's going to basically hold water in your skin while you're exfoliating because it creates a healing environment for the skin. Anti-inflammatories at the same time because again, you are causing irritation no matter what you do when you exfoliate. So things like Centella Asiatica, Panthenol, these are wonderful um, anti-inflammatories. And honestly, it was very hard. When I looked at what's available, the perfect exfoliator for skin of color just actually doesn't exist. You're missing one or two of these key criteria that I would want for my face. Um, so I'll tell you ones that I came as close as possible to finding because it also had to be made safe. So no denatured alcohol, no fragrance, no essential oils, of course. So let's start off. Number one was the Inky List. is 10% lactic acid. It might be a little bit too strong, but just listen to your own skin. The next one was Revolution 5% lactic acid plus hyaluronic acid. So that was the closest one that I could find. Third one is Be Minimalist 10% plus 1% hyaluronic acid. So it might be too strong, but you might just want to try that once a fortnight and see how your skin deals with that. So for me, I when I was formulating Exfoliate to Glow, now for me, for my skin, I have sensitive skin, I am prone to melasma, I tend to get dull skin, especially if I haven't been good with my skincare. And actually my perfect exfoliator didn't exist. So I created Exfoliate to Glow just for my own face, which was 5% Mandelic, which is not as effective as the 5% lactic acid. So I did both together, 5% plus 5% plus 7% glycerin in order to create that healing environment while I know I'm exfoliating. 
Um, and that for me is is ideal because it's gentle but effective, which really is that fine balance that we need to walk with skin of color. Don't forget, I'm in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video. Don't forget to download your free guide for skin of color. The link is down below. <clears throat> Please do follow me on Instagram at uh, Dr. Mita Ratan and Skim Care by Dr. V. I've got two accounts and also on TikTok, Dr. Mita Ratan too. Please do ask me your questions below and if there are any products that you want me to create for skin of colour that don't exist right now, please write them down below too and I'll put them on my to-do list. Um, I'm not going to create products that already exist. I'll just tell you to go and purchase that because it's a huge uh, stress <laughs> for me. Um, but if it doesn't exist and I'll Global Skin of Family needs it, I will make it for you. So write down below what doesn't exist and that you need and I will make it happen. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.